Hi everyone, welcome to How to Trick a Fish. Today my live is going to be all about what's in my LRF tackle bag in 2023. You might have seen I did a video like this about a year ago. Um, so well, just over a year and a half ago actually, but it's over around Christmas time, 2021. Um, a lot's changed since then about what I carry. So um, I'm going to go through, first of all, is my bag. You have to excuse the fact it's pretty damn beat up. I use this all the way through the Big Lurf Winter League campaign, and it's obviously had loads of use in the wind, the snow, and torrential rain that's been used to death. So, but it's a waist bag, and it's just got a waist belt that goes all the way around. Um, I really like it. So, before I'd use a shoulder bag, I've sort of changed to a waist bag. The only problem I find with the waist bag is that when I wear it on my front, and I lean against railings and stuff, I have broken some stuff inside before. So, you just need to remember if you're going to wear a waist bag, and um, obviously, don't do that. Uh, some of the things I like about this Rapala waist bag. It's got these little loops all the way around the waist. Uh, this is really, really good for putting carabiners on. A lot of the tools and stuff that I use have got carabiners. So I clip them on and I've got all my tools then within handy reach. You can also put on their sort of drinks bottle and holders and stuff like that. But it's talking of drinks bowls. It has a nice elastic pouch at the side where you can put a drinks bottle in there. But I normally actually use this to store my leader. Um, so straight away, I keep on sort of four pound fluoro leader on me now for all times, which would normally go in there. So I've got quick access to it. Uh, the other side of the bag, it's got a zip pocket, opens up, um, decent size, you could probably keep a small RF reel or something in there, but I actually use it for different sort of um, hard plastic pouches and stuff like that, which I'll show you uh, during the rest of the video. The actual belt itself is quite nicely padded, really comfortable all the way around, and it has got sort of a carry strap if you want to carry like that. And um, the strap itself as well extends pretty long. So you can wear it like a shoulder bag if you want to. So sometimes on some of the sessions I have wore it across my chest. And so I've got it sort of there. If I want to obviously keep the waist free. Just leave the hat on so you don't see how bad my hair looks today. Or my lack of hair looks today. Uh, on the front of them, the bag as well, on some of the loops, they have got these little um, sort of Velcro rod, rod holders. So if you've got a small rod or you can use it for your net or whatever, um, you could... Um, Unlock with these and hold whatever you want to hold in front of it. I've never actually used them, they're just on there with the Rapala logo. I think they look all right, so I leave them on. Open up the main bag, it's got a really decent sized main compartment. You can fit a lot in there, as you'll see in a minute, with the amount of stuff I'm going to put in. At the back of it, it's got another slot there, which I normally use to keep tools and stuff in. I've kept hooks and stuff in there in the past, but I now use this nice little waterproof part at the top, which opens up. That was already open, even. I like a while now. So it opens up. And I normally now keep all sort of like hooks and stuff in there. So now I'll go through to what I actually take on a session. We'll start off with the tools. So the first one I always carry is my Savage Gear Magic Scissors. These are probably going to need replacing soon because um, the cutting piece on them is starting to get blunt. I've done a whole video on these in the past. Um, I think they're about five or six quid. They're really handy because they've got a little split ring plier on the end, a little sort of grippy piece. I've actually used these to take hooks and stuff out of fish in the past as well. And it's also got some snips in there. But the snips aren't brilliant. They've actually replaced them with some braids. I'm not sure where they are at the moment. But... So, yep, so that gets attached to the outside of the bag. The next thing I always have is a pair of small forceps. Really good for getting inside small fish's mouths. and um, Really good for getting hooks out and stuff like that. So I keep a pair of those. I normally have those on another and like an elastic um, strap as well off the side of the bag. Next, I carry a range of disgorgers. Um, sometimes they're inside the bag, but if it's wet weather or in the winter, I'm wearing coat. I normally have them in one of the big coat pockets. So I've got three different sizes there. Really, really handy, especially the really small one for getting hooks out of really small fish. Um, when I'm fishing for gobies and blennies and stuff like that, quite often you get some deep hook fish if you try and avoid that when you can. But obviously, if you do get them deep hooked, these are really good. Um, I could do another video at some point on how to use these. Um, but yeah, really, really handy. I, should, I recommend everybody buy some. They're about a pound each, and most of the fishing websites will sell them. Um, but try and get a really thin one if you can, especially if you're fishing for micro species. The next thing, I did a video the other day about baiting needles. I carry at least two now. I have one in my pocket normally and another one in the bag as a spare. Sharpened to a point, so it's really sharp. These are really handy for putting lures onto hooks, especially onto small hooks. So yeah, I carry two of those. These are the Gemini baiting needles. Next, the main thing that goes in my bag, I've got a huge tub. This is a Sistema, like um, Sainsbury's or Tesco's bought um, clip lock tub. 
I've got this full of all sorts of different smelly lures. Um, I'll get a couple out so you can see that they stink. I don't want to touch too many. Actually, I'll probably just hold the camera. So I've got just about everything there. Isome, Gulp, Eco Gear Aqua, just about everything. Um, I keep them all in together. I do top up the liquid every now and again when it's getting low. Um, I've seen all sorts of theories about not keeping them together, but I don't really care. I seem to catch fish on this stuff, so it works. And I just leave it in there as it is. Then I have two more of these little Versus tubs. Um, I'm going to start to store these and these getting back just because they don't leak. So gradually as I go forward, I'll replace that big tub with some of the bigger Versus tubs. Uh, at the moment, I've got Eco Gear Aquas in there. I just I basically have them separate so they're uh, quicker access because these are the lures that I use the most when I'm sort of species hunting for competitions. I've got the Eco Gear Aqua Straits in one, and I've got the Eco Gear Aqua, what are they called, the ones with the little ball tails. Oh, it's embarrassing because like, everyone loves them, but I'll, I'll put that in the notes. I if I can't, if I remember, don't remember drawing the video. You could get our oh, Shirazu, the Shirazu, so yeah, so I keep both of those. So they go nicely into the bag. So, in the next thing, I'm not getting normally goes into my pocket. I have a case full of split shots, uh, all different sizes. I tend to use these instead of most of my other weights. Now, I've st stopped using chevs as much as I used to, I stopped using drop shots as much as I used to. I find these quicker and easier to change the weight. I just clip a, clip a few of them on. You can add more, take them off. Like, it's really, really simple, nice and easy to use. Great for a really, really small fish as well. And yeah, they normally go into a pocket. I've got a case full of jig heads. Sometimes, depending on what else I'm taking, I use a bigger case for jig heads. I've got it in somewhere. So sometimes I use a bigger one with even more in there. But at least this sort of size, uh, again, sometimes it's in my pocket. And I've got all different shapes and sizes of jig heads there. Really handy because my favorite type of LRF fishing is with jig heads. I've then got one of these little 9-7 tungsten boxes. Uh, it's normally full of chebs and stuff like that. Sometimes I actually have stuff made up in there. So I'll have like chebs with hooks ready and sometimes chebs with the um, little tenegas on as well. So again, it normally goes in here. I've got two of these sort of mayo type tubs. Um, that one I actually picked up while I was in Japan, and this one I think was originally an Eco Gear no, an Eco Gear pocket in kit. Uh, this one is full of all of my sort of weights and stuff like that. So I'm going to spill them over if I try and show you. But I've basically got all my drop shots in there. Um, I've got glass beads, um, some split shot. I've got loads of different sized chebs. Uh, what else have I got? I've got the sort of Texas bullet weights, a few different sizes of those in there as well. And that's about it at the minute, yeah. So just I basically use that, it's quite heavy. And um, so I just fill it up with all the sort of stuff I'm gonna use for making up rigs and for um for basically when I'm out fishing. That goes in the side pocket in my bag, which I showed you earlier on. And then in with there in that side, same side pocket, goes another one of those tubs, and that is normally just full of different sizes and shapes of hooks. Um at the moment there's not a great deal in there because I've started keeping my hooks separately. So gradually as I'm into this out, I'm gonna get rid of this and start keeping my hooks in their original packets, just so I can find the right size easier. So that's flipped up. Then I've got an empty split shot case, which I'm now starting to keep my smaller metals in. And um, I don't tend to use big metals at all anymore. So I've just got some sort of the biggest sort of size I've got in there are three grams at the moment. I'll probably do go up to five grams now. Um, I've mainly got HTO Tic Tacs and some of those, um, what the, the major craft jig powers in there at the moment, as well as some of the little tiny little major crafts and a couple of really old school um, Dexter Wedge style holders. So just a few um, metals, basically if I do think there's some pelagics around or I'm gonna be fishing for something like Pollock and I wanna try something a bit different, uh, I do always carry at least a few metals. Uh, another one that normally goes into my pocket, um, thanks you to Steve Dennis for buying me two of these as a gift from him. I was talking phrase about going back to rig wallets Absolutely love this. So now if I tie a drop shot, I'm going to get onto my leader and cut it off. I will put a little loop on it and use the same uh, rig again. And mm -hmm. um, I've now got this sort of full of all sorts of stuff. So I've got beads and then I've got a range of little tenegas already made up on um, chebs and stuff like that. I've got um, split shot rigs already made up, uh, drop shot rigs. I also keep in here lots of different size hooks to nylons. So little tiny, tiny hooks on all different sizes of, uh, sorry, all different sizes of tiny hooks on mine. Uh, all of my tenegos and stuff and um, I've bought a little sort of drop shot rig that I've pre-made up. Really, really handy, especially for competition fishing when you need to be quick and change over in a hurry. And um, so yeah, that normally goes in my coat pocket. Um, during the summer, I'm gonna have to experiment on how I keep all this, whether or not I can fit it all in the bag or not. But I'm gonna show it in the bag for now and we'll see how we get on throughout the rest of this video. Uh, another tool that I always carry is a hook sharpener. Um, really, really handy, especially if you've got sort of stuff that's in your bag for, for a year or so and you go back and use a lure that you haven't used in a long time, get a slightly rusty hook, you can actually um, bring that hook back to life. 
when I'm fishing with metals and people that I know that I fish with me with metals, I pretty much sharpen my hooks before every sort of session if I'm going to be uh, fishing with metals. So before I cast a metal out, I'll make sure it's sharp, especially if there's um, garfish around because they tend to bounce off a lot. If you sharpen your hooks, you'll get a lot less bounce-offs. Really, really handy. Keep the one in your bag. Uh, lure clips. I've got a range of different tiny little lure clips inside this little box. Um, I can't remember uh, where I bought this, but Spro uh, do like this little freestyle clips, and um, it comes in this little really handy plastic clip box. So I basically just kept that now, and every time I buy different lure clips, uh, I'll put them in that little tub. Really, really handy. That goes in with the top part of my bag, uh, where I normally keep my hooks and stuff like that. My cat's just come in to say hello. Uh, next, I've got a Ziploc bag at the moment because I had these uh, out of the bag whilst I had the bag washed. And um, this is absolutely full of all different sizes of hooks and hooks for nylons and stuff like that. I'll show you some examples as I put some of them in. So I've got some Spro Freestyle size 12s. I've got uh, Camasan size 22 hooks to nylons, 18s, 20s, all hooks to nylon there. Uh, I do I have lots of sort of little tiny um, freshwater hooks, which I use. Um, normally barbless, PTFE coated guru ones are really, really good. Um, I've got the little Kamasan ones. So I've got just about every size from sort of size 8 all the way up to size 22, 24. Oh, is it going to say hello to the cat? Yeah. Can you say hello? Not very happy. You want to go up on top? Sorry, let me just get rid of the cat. As well as I hooks, yeah, so all different sizes, different sizes, hooked to nylons. Um, I've got some sort of drop shot style ones in there as well. I very rarely use these sort of bigger ones anymore. Uh, some of the decoy hooks um, and like nice shapes that are coming in from um, Johnny Laffer at the moment. Uh, they've been really, really nice, especially for some of my sort of um, snooded drop shot rigs. A few different shapes and sizes of those. Some of the sort of Tenego hook to nylons coming from Johnny Laffer as well, and a few different sizes. I think that's enough about hooks and stuff. Oh, one thing I will say is I've just really got into oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, some of the coloured hooks um, coming in from Gamakatsu at the moment. Um, you can actually fish these sometimes without a lure on them. I feel like the pink and the yellow actually attracts the fish on their own. I've had quite a few fish during the Winter League and um, just using these when you've actually had your bait robbed or something like that or you've had your lure robbed. Um, you might still get the bites with these left on there. One to remember. So there's all the hooks and stuff, and that all fits in that pocket in the top of the bag quite nicely. Zipped up, and I've got a good sort of 25 packets of hooks in there. Uh, then I've got something that I only started using during the Winter League. Um, I was stood next to Dan Cooper one night when Dan was fishing, and we were side by side, very similar rigs, and he was out catching me sort of 10 to 1, and he was using these Moon Glows. Um, I can put the link on the description if anybody wants them. I basically bought every single colour that they do, um, and they all seem to work. Um, some fish, I feel like it might spook them, but uh, lots of fish, especially sort of black gobies, um, pouting, poor cod, whiting, pollock, um, what else do we have on these? Uh, sand gobies even, some of these really small stuff as well. Uh, it does seem to really do the trick. And when we did our Hartlepool trip during the Big Lurf trip as well, uh, we found these were doing really, really well. So I had a lot of the fish that I caught in Hartlepool uh, had these on the line at the same time. Really, really handy. You basically slide them over your hook. I might do another video showing you these at another point. Uh, I'll chuck all the tools and stuff in there so I can just see if it all actually fits. Uh, something that I don't always carry, but it's good to hand me for competitions when you try to ID fish. Got a few different sizes of these viewing tanks now. They come in from Johnny Lurfer, but you can get them from Tenego Max as well. Lastly, I've got this sort of, um, this is quite new actually. I picked this up uh, from a local tackle shop. It's a dial or sort of, um, well, bits and bobs cases, as I say. I normally, could, again, keep this in my pocket. Um, it will fit in the bag as well. Yeah, as you see, the bag isn't actually completely overloaded yet. All, everything I've shown you so far all fits in this bag, no problem whatsoever. Um, so what I tend to do with this on a session is anything that I want to wash and put back, it would go in this um, rather than going back in the tub it came from. So all the different bits and bobs I use in a session, I'll put in this, keep in my pocket. You can either reuse them during that session, or obviously you can just chuck them back in the original bit um, boxes if you're not so worried. The cat has the carpet. Get out, little shit. Excuse my language. So that goes in. Uh, another one I always keep in my coat pocket. This is um, the, I think it's being my Marrow Q, but it's um, the snow, so it's my sort of ice snow. Um, you can probably just see 
really, really tiny little bits of soft plastic lure. Um, using these on the Tenegos for the really small species like your two-spotted gobies, your painted gobies, and um, free-spine stickleback, stuff like that. Really handy to keep um, on you, I'll say at all times, if you come across really small fish, um, I recommend getting some of these. You can just use really cut up bits of other um, soft plastic lure like Isome or um, Eco Goaco or stuff like that. Works just as well, but these are obviously already cut down to a really small size. Uh, if I'm going to be night fishing, I will have my um, headlight with me. I've got one of the, um, what was my brand of this, the Fenix ones. I think a lot of people use the Shadow Master. This is the H65R, I think it's called. HM65R. Um, what I found with these is a nightmare with, if you only have one battery, so I would recommend getting yourself a bunch of different batteries. Um, if you get the cheap ones off Amazon, I will say they don't last anywhere near as long as the original um, Fenix ones. So if you can afford the Fenix ones, I think they're about 25, 30 quid each, get a few spare of those. But if not, you could pick up sort of 10 of the um, cheaper versions for less than, I think it's about 10 quid I paid for all of them. So if you've got a pocket, a pocket full of them, you've got more than enough for any session, which is really handy. Again, I don't actually keep that in my bag. It would always just go in my coat pocket or a rucksack if I want to carry a rucksack. And the last thing I'll probably put in, which I don't always take with me, um, especially for competition fishing, is a range of soft plastics. Um, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different packets of um, soft plastics around my office here. Um, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of them, like hundreds, literally hundreds of packets. It's ridiculous. Um, what I will say is that even though I don't normally tend to use them on um, competition settings, because I feel like the um, scented... Um, soft baits give you an advantage i really really struggled during the winter league to find myself a coal fish and what finally did the trick for me was one of these eco gear grass minnows and as proof it was like one of the last seconds of the season it's still in this sort of go box um and that's it the jig head with the eco gear grass minnow on there um it's not the s it's just the eco gear grass minnow s isn't it yeah the eco gear grass minnow s um I tried everything for those cold fish. Um, I was good fishing around Tor Bay, different spots, um, several sessions. Um, a few other people would pick them up around me, but I hadn't got it. And what I finally got it on um, was a jig head and one of these and um, fishing it on the drop. So sometimes having a paddle tail will outfish the soft, um, the scented soft plastic. So I will say it's worth keeping some soft plastics on you. And if you do get into a shoal of pelagics and stuff like that, it's a bit more fun sometimes to try and trick them on the, the unscented. And um, obviously it's a little bit harder, which that sort of part of the fun of the challenge. And um, these ones are from 97 Tungsten. I think the one's called the Fat Ass. I can't remember what the other one's called there, but some really good ones. And then this has got to be one of the most versatile um, paddle tail soft plastics, the Key Tech Easy Shiners. Uh, they're little two-inch ones. I think they do do some smaller ones, and they've definitely got some huge ones I use for bass. Um, yeah, really, really good paddle tail if you do want one. Is that everything? I'll, I'll also obviously take my rod and reel. I won't go into rod and reels and stuff today, but obviously that's one thing you need. I always carry a drop net. Sorry, a drop net. Uh, you can carry a drop net. I always carry an extending um, landing net. Um, I haven't got it with me. It's in the garage at the moment. And then something I've started carrying recently is also a landing mat, um, just mainly for taking photos of the fish and stuff like that. So if you get some slightly bigger fish and you don't want to bounce around the ground, you can get yourself some quite a good little clip on um, small landing mats. I think that is just about it. It's just about everything on my desk here. Oh, um, another one for competitions. Um, this is literally an old hook um, case. I can't remember what the hooks it came on. But I've got a, a really heavy carabiner in there. And for when I'm doing competitions, I would normally put my competition card and print it out small in there. And that way I've got one so it's not going to blow away in the wind. So um, just really handy to keep. So I normally got one of those in my bag during competitions. And to be honest, I tend to not fish LRF that much outside of competitions anymore because I've got really into bass fishing in the summers. So I tend to just fish sort of on the sort of coming up to a competition to get ready and practice. And then for the competition itself, obviously during the big laugh Winter League, I fished LRF pretty much every day for four months. So really, really handy to have a few of these around. Um, I normally keep almost a card in every pocket. So when you're trying to get a card quickly to get a photo of your catch and get it back in the water, you've got something around. But really handy tip, get yourself a decent sort of plastic um, wallet with a something heavy in it. You could use a drop shot weight or something like that if you want instead. But I've got this nice um, heavy steel carabiner. So that's what I use. So just to prove that is everything, I'm even going to put the head torch in the bag and zip it up. But everything I've shown you today fits into this bag quite comfortably, quite a lot of room spare. Um, so yeah, that's um, everything I carry on my last session. I've been 20 minutes already and I definitely need to go and get myself a decent drink. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, thanks for those guys, guys who have joined me live today as well. Um, I'll 
just drop me um, any comments you want, any videos you want me to make in the future, any of these you want sort of a more in-depth dive on or talk about, and I'll get to that as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Keep fishing, guys.